everyone, welcome to that photo show down here. Mick here, hello. Uh, as you can probably guess today, we're all about the Boss DM 101 uh, amid a slightly wider conversation. Before that, Thank you for watching. Please subscribe on YouTube. Please go to that pedal show store where you can buy merch and stuff, which is the primary way we you find You can look as good as show. this. You can. We've even got some new coffee cups, which are actually quite um quite stylish. That's really nice. Yeah, with like the dipped uh, thing there, which is- This is know. literally the first time I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it does say that pedal show on it's that side. Played, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can nice. choose. If you're left-handed, you could uh, show the world okay. your devotion. I like that. Yeah, and um, if you're right-handed, you can just Remind keep it to it. yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, and it does function as a as an adequate beverage deliverer. <laughs> so, that pedal show store dot com. Please go there, buy merch. It's how we fund the show. Uh, to wit, to woo. Um, why is this exciting? Okay. Received a message a few weeks ago from uh, our dear mate Matt at Boss, saying this is coming out. By the way. It's all analog. Yeah. It has eight Bucket Brigade device chips in it. And I haven't been this, I mean, I'm not a very excitable person, as you well know. No, I'm no. I'm normally very no. cool, calm and collected. <laughs> and, uh, and I saw this and I thought, well, this is going to be, yeah, I, got, I got excited. You did. For, uh, just you did. for a change, I got really excited. Uh, uh, some context for that. We'll get, we'll get these sorts of emails all the time and, and stuff comes in and Dan's like, meh. Meh, meh, meh. This came in. He was he was properly, properly excited. So that's why it's on there. The questions we're going to ask today, just to sort of summarise before we get going, uh, why analog delay? Indeed. We'll talk about that. You know, what what is it? What's so special about analog delay? We'll briefly do that because we've talked about that a lot in the past. Um, what? Why is this so interesting? Dan hinted at it with the eight uh, BBD chips in there, but there's some other stuff too. We're going to show you just some very, very simple examples of things to play with delay. So mm. we did this in a show a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of people really liked it. I can't remember what we were talking about, but anyway, we did it. We bought the funk. Oh, the funk, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do that. And if you've never played with delay before, or if you've tried delay and it doesn't really work for you, then hopefully this will get you going uh, with just some simple stuff to try. Um, what does this new thing, the 101, offer over a, nor a, no a normal analog delay? And for mm. that, we have the MXR carbon copy. What you will have seen in all the demos so far is probably only the DM101 on the board. Uh, we've introduced some other stuff to ask some more interesting questions. What about something more exotic? For example, the king of analog delays currently is the Sir Discovery delay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, beautiful thing. Would you choose it over something like the DD200, which is an affordable do-it-all delay? And for what it's worth, Dan, if I was going to go and buy a delay pedal tomorrow, that's what I'd buy. Sure. If I could only have one. Yep. And finally, 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 a question that we have never asked about an analog delay before. Could it actually function as your do-it-all delay? Yeah. And, and for that, you've been using... I've been, I would use a timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of the, the, the specific sound of analog delay, which brings us to why analog delay? What's so cool about analog delay? So when analog delay first came out, it was it was designed to replicate the sound of tape machines. Up to that point, if you wanted to have an echo on your sound, you either had a tape machine or an echo rack drum style delay. And when the Bucket Brigade chip first came out, uh, it gave designers the opportunity to 
create echo in a much more compact, friendly style, you know, things with uh, tape delays and echo recs, they're... If you can see those two devices that are sort of behind Daniel there, you might, depending on which way the camera's pointing, you might only be able to see one, but, you know, imagine carrying that around, the Boss RE201 Space Echo, complete Im with imagine. tape. <laughs> yeah, imagine. That was that was the reality before, and then Absolutely. all of a sudden, something actually this size happens. Yeah, yeah, the, the original D, uh, DM1 happened. So it gave uh, players the opportunity to have a delay, an echo, without having to rely on tape. Yeah. And that was a massive step forward. And, of course, with that came flanges and, and everything else that uses that delay chip to create these sounds, chorus, pedals, blah, blah, blah. So it's a sound that, you know, the delay revolutionized, uh, the analog delay chip revolutionized effects as we know it. And it was a uh, sound that just worked with so many things. Then what happened, when the digital delay came, up, came along, Suddenly, analog delays weren't worth anything because the digital was the new stuff. Yeah. But it didn't take long for a lot of players to gravitate back towards the analog delay. There's something in there. There's something in that. Well, it was a sound that you could have a lot of lot of that delay in your mix, and it wouldn't wouldn't encroach on what you're doing. It wouldn't take over from you know the lines that you're playing, um, and it just has a character. Has a thing. Well, well. Demonstrate that briefly. So I'm going to dial in the DD200 here to sound a bit like a tape delay. And um, you'll just hear the repeats of that. Then we'll switch on something similar that came next and you'll hear the vast difference in the two sounds. Sure. So um, if you just play for me a sec, Dan. Now listen to this. So even though the delay times are slightly different, what you will have heard in the repeats, now actually the DD200 there is overdoing the tape sound a little bit. A nicely well-maintained tape would sound bright and clean and lovely. Mm. That's putting a bit of the age of the tape. But what do we hear in the analog delay? The repeats are warmer and they, uh, when we say warmer, they they don't have the same sort of top end and, and clarity that the digital delay has. But also, as the repeats sort of tail on, each repeat gets progressively darker. So it has this, it, you know, that um, repeating delay thing, each echo has its own character um, as opposed to a, purely pristine digital delay, which just sounds is basically a mirror image of what goes into it. Yeah, and as Dan was alluding there, once the digital delays came out, compared side to side, the analog delay sounded very primitive and very sort of lo-fi and very unsophisticated when mm. actually what you might have wanted, if you consider what happened in the music of the time through the 80s there, uh, cleanliness, pristine, mm. we were getting into rat gear. Yeah. It was all about that, wasn't it? It wasn't about lo-fi. So the analog delay fell out of favor. Long story short, here we are again. All the people who really knew always loved analog delays. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of other people are just starting to come back and go, wow, that does some, some really cool things. Um, before we get into the units then, here's some really simple stuff. If you have tried a delay pedal and it doesn't make any sense to you and you're like, I don't get what that what's going on there. Here's some things to try. And we'll use the, well, let's use the DD200 as the example because you can see the times on the top panel. Nice. And this will give you an idea of, of, of some things. Great. Um, 
uh, I'll kick off with, with what we call a slapback delay, right? We start with short delays. We'll do this as quickly as we can um, because it's, cover, it's ground we have covered before, but it will help give some context into what's going to come next. So I'm going to dial in what we would call a slapback delay, which is generally considered to be between, I don't know, like 80 and 100 milliseconds, 150, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So let's go down to 120. And um, I believe if you click and hold, it goes much quicker. Um, this should give us, and we want quite a lot of level on this, and we want not much feedback, maybe only one repeat. So when you hear the guitar, you should hear the main note and one quick slap. Right, without it. Now that's actually pretty loud, so I'm gonna turn the level down a bit. But this, this would get us into our rock and roll, right? I'd actually take a bit more out, turn it down a tiny bit more. It's such a cool sound. You can use slapback for loads more things, but there's a good thing to get started with. Yeah, great. Uh, I am going to reduce the delay time even further. And this is like a, like a doubling delay. So I'm gonna go down to 30 milliseconds. So this is something that's really nice just to thicken up lead sounds. Um, so I put a little bit of uh, love on there. So it just gives a, a bit more weight and uh, it just helps things pop out a little bit more in the mix. I really, really like using delays like that. And one thing that you'll start to hear there is uh, the beginning of something that approaches a chorusing effect. That's what those short delay times then become when you do something to them. Okay, for the next one, um, I'm gonna go to a, a delay speed that I use all the time as an all round delay that will fit under pretty much anything as long as it's not too prominent. Mm -hmm. I use 335 milliseconds because it happens to be one of my favorite guitars. No other reason. <laughs> right. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when you've got a brightish sounding delay, as the delays get longer, you want to turn the effect level down a bit. Right. There are some specific examples where you wouldn't want to do that, but as a general rule of thumb, it just helps it not get in the way so much. Sure. So um, I was going to have a bit more of that down, if you don't mind, yeah. more overdrive, and just play some lead type stuff, and we'll turn the effect level down. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll leave it up, leave the effect level up, and here's what happens if you have a delay of this length uh, on a sound like this. So. Isn't it funny? There's a real, uh, it's so easy 
for that to turn into mush, but you get that effect level right and it just thickens everything out. It's beautiful. As we'll discover when we start talk when we eventually start talking about analog delays, um, the way that that delay goes off and gets darker and kind of goes away helps it not be so prominent in the sound. One of the reasons analog delays are loved so much. Talk about that in a sec. Anything else, Dan, for the people uh, to try? Well, the simple one, uh, like timed delays. Yeah. So you got things like, you know, you hear all the time dotted eights and that sort of stuff. Let's just start with a simple quarter note with a delay that's in time with what you're playing. So the DD200 has a tap tempo on it, which enables you to tap the tempo of the tune that you're playing. And having a delay that's in time with what you're playing, it just adds a really nice, um, yeah, again, thickening quality, but it's a, because it's in time, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different effect. I'll tap if you like. Yeah, great. If you can turn me on, baby. <laughs> you look so nice. <laughs> Doesn't take much. play exactly the same thing, I'll make the delay time not match what he's doing, it will be almost impossible to play. Okay. <laughs> Which is to say that if, if you are struggling with delay and you turn it on and it just turns into this terrible mess and you don't really get what's going on, simply tap in time to the music and that will make everything so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. There's loads of other things you can do. Please watch some of our other uh, videos on delay, but hopefully that will is some context for some of the things that we're about to discuss eventually. Welcome to that pedal show. Today's amps, Dan? Oh yeah. Today's amps is a double maiden D power section Mesa Boogie 2x12 stereo conglomeration. Yeah, we will invoke Noel's knobs. <laughs> I wonder what the settings are. But there's not much to see today, Noel. Um, this is, as Dan says, it's a stereo valve power amp. And the reason that we're stereo is because we want to get a similar thing on both sides as possible. Normally, we just use two amps, wet, dry, or dual mono, or whatever. But we wanted them to be as similar as possible. So 50-50 stereo power amp. These are WGS-12L speakers, so they're kind of like EVs in 1x12 cabs, and they are being driven by two Maiden D preamps, which is like a Dumble clean channel. If that all sounds too complex, just imagine you've got two amps that are exactly the same. Yeah. That's what we've got here. Yeah, exactly. But these, these are the only, this, we don't actually have two amps that are the same, so this is, <laughs> this is the closest we have to it. Uh, right. Um, so the reason for going stereo yeah. And I've never seen this in an analog delay before, but it's actually a proper stereo analog delay. Actually, is it stereo in and out? No, it's just stereo out. Okay, fine. Unless there's a TRS option, but I, I don't believe so. I don't know. Okay, um, so the first, uh, we'll do this briefly. If you want to know an actual deep dive of the features, go and watch Brett Kingman's video, go and watch the Anderson's demo. Yeah. Um, I even think Josh J.H. has done one. Okay. If you want to see a deep dive on the features, go and watch that. Boss's videos will be brilliant for sure, um, whoever's ended up doing those. We're more interested in the other questions. So, but however, briefly, what have we got? How many? You've got six mono uh, configurations, and then you've got six stereo, uh, so we say engines. Yeah. Um, so in mono, does it just send the same thing yes. both sides? Yeah, but, but it uses the, so it's got eight chips in it, yeah. right? And you can do different things with chips in series and parallel and split and all that sort of stuff. Um, but one of the things, so it will do everything from the original DM2 analog delay sound. Then it starts to, you know, you expanding on that. On top of the DM2, it also has built-in modulation. Yeah, which of course the DM2 
There used to be one over there, but there isn't anymore. Uh, maybe it's over there. Oh, it's there on the back wall. Look, lovely. Um, didn't have modulation. Right. Okay. Should we hear the DM two? Yep. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, I'm going to apologise in advance for looking at my phone, but I've got the cheat sheet on my phone so I can see the what the controls actually do. Straight up, characteristic, characteristic warm analog sound. Vintage mode is Boss DM2. Okay. Replicator, which we are on. <laughs> Explain this to me. It's why is it as soon as that sound starts happening, I I just want to play. I don't I don't really understand. It's a delay pedal. It's a real you know, and we've got hundreds of them, and they're all great. But there's something about analog delays. I just find them so inspiring I, I think what it is is that so what I did there um, again a, a sort of basic delay lesson if you like especially on an analog delay and particularly the DM2 will come onto the carbon copy in this in a second does exactly the same thing what we had there was the maximum delay time which would have been 300 and some milliseconds mm -hmm. which was the maximum delay time of the DM2 at the time I then turn the intensity knob up and the intensity is how many repeats you get. And then what happens is you get into something called oscillation. So the repeats then go back through the delay chip, blah, blah, blah. And you get this bed that was happening. Yeah. And Dan loves with an, well, actually with analog, any delay, but especially an analog delay where that just starts happening and it creates this bed and the intensity with which you play can send it further in or yeah. bring it yeah, further yeah, yeah. out. It's such a great thing. And you love that. And re what we were talking about earlier with the sort of tonal character of the repeats, because it goes off warm like that, because you lose the top end and the sharp pick attack and it starts to filter, mm. it does then become like an otherworldly bed under what you're playing yeah. rather than trying to fight with what you're playing. Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. Lovely. So just, we're not going to go through every mode, but I just want to hear what modulation on a DM2 would yeah, have sounded yeah, sure. like. Depending on which mode you're in, the um, this knob here, the variation knob, will change different parameters. In the DM2 mode, it changes the shape of the modulation. Oh, wow. And you know how we've always wondered what the CE2 mod shape looks like? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'll put a graphic of that on screen, but um, I, I'm not saying that it is. It goes from a, a triangle to a sine wave to a kind of, you know, well, here you go. Here's a, here's a, this will go from a smooth um, sine wave type modulation to something a little more uh, uneven. Dan, if you just play a chord and let it go.
So that, I mean, it is a bit sickening that uh, if you use it intensely like that, but it's a cool sound. All right, at this point then, let's uh, many of you out there will own the carbon copy, MXR carbon copy. I would say the most successful modern analog yeah. delay. Uh, design. It brought analog, it brought the, an analog delay to a new generation of players. Yeah. Uh, designed by George Tripps, um, from way huge MXR, Dunlop and all of that. Let's just have a listen to the tonal character then, because there's no tone control on here, is there? No. So we, we can't adjust the tone control of the repeats there. The MXR is notably dark sounding. That's why there's a light green one, which is the bright. But this is the standard carbon copy. Let's have a listen to the difference in, in the two. One thing we noticed instantly is the carbon copy is capable of much longer delays. Yeah. But then the, it's 600, I think, but the uh, the DM101 will go vastly beyond that in a minute, as you'll see. Sure. So I'll try and dial in a similar sort of delay time. Go for it. Cool. Bit more, bit more delays. Something really nice about the way the carbon copy filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The carbon copy definitely has a thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a more pronounced filter mm. in the straight mode. We got flipping about fifty more modes to go in the in the one hundred and one yet. Sorry, Matt from Monty's has just texted me because I saw him last night. I should turn my phone on to silent with apologies. <laughs> Very rude. All right. Um, it still has that. There's a classic analog character that you that to this day I've not heard fate you know what I mean is there something that that's doing that you can't you there's there are things about that character that I just haven't heard replicated that it does organically oh uh, well interesting you know I mean? question then well here then is the dd 200s analog delay such an unfortunate beginning to the word <laughs> what's that <laughs> we can work it out. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. It's great. Interesting. I flicked over to the uh, modern mode in the DM101 there, which gives you up to 840 milliseconds and a brighter repeat. Right. Quite different character from the DD200, but fair show from the DD200 yeah, yeah. there. Plus, you can get much longer, yeah, longer delays. So far, I wouldn't choose it over the DD200. Right. Okay. And I wouldn't choose it over the carbon copy. Okay. So far. Sure. Because. I'm happy with the analog delay sound of that. Yeah. I'm really happy with the do-it-all nature of that. Sure. Good enough. Um, let's move on then. So some of these other modes, let's see, what do we get after modern? We get multi-head. Oh yeah. 
Mm. Four delay blocks in series. So yes. this is a four head delay. Yep. Uh, selects heads. Uh, so the then this knob here then selects the pattern of the heads. Yeah. So we I guess we're just gonna have to guess, are we? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it shows you here. Yeah, of course it does. So that's one, three, and four. Right. Um, the day it's really setting. interesting because uh, I, on an Echorec, for example, which is, I guess, what we're talking about with a forehead, mm. or it could be a forehead tape either, whether it's a forehead tape or a forehead drum, the repeats would be brighter. Yeah. So that's a new sound for me. Right. Where it's darker. Four, for... four analog delays coming after. Yeah. Let's try and add some modulation. Play some, play some chords that have got some arpeggiation in them there. That's me for days. <laughs> so we went from the multi-head then to the, what they call non-linear, which is a reverse type, apparently. Okay, um, let's get on to some of these, or, or are they the stereo ones? I'm confused. No, so stereo, the first six yeah. are mono. Yeah. And then from reflect, we get into stereo. Great, so reflect is a stereo, is it? Yes. Come on then. Mm -hmm. 
So this next one is really cool. Remember Dan talked about a doubling delay earlier? Yeah. This is a super short doubling delay plus a regular delay. So you get 10 to 20 milliseconds right. as a double plus your regular delay in the next setting. Okay. So... That last one was actually the ambience, so apologies. Right, here we go then. Let's try this doubling and the, and the regular delay. So listen, listen to the uh, two very distinct repeats there. When Dan hits the, the black, you'll hear a super short one and then one that comes after. I'll get him to play, we'll stick some overdrive on, and what I'll do is while he's playing, I'll turn that doubling delay from 20 milliseconds down to 10. Okay. Which is what the variation control does, I think. Just let me double check that. Yeah. So the regular delay is available from 10 to 310 milliseconds. Right. And then the doubling delay is 10 to 20. Okay. So give it a give it some triangulage. Giddy art. For that sound alone, I'm buying it over the DD200 or the carbon copy. Now, it's fair to say you can set that up in the DD200. Apologies for the ugly cut there. We just did double check that you can do that in the DD200 and you can do something similar. Yeah. However, it's much easier in that. Yeah. And I prefer the sound of it. Yeah, it does sound really wonderful. Uh, okay. Um, have a just, you have a play. I'm going to flick through a couple of other stereo. Shenanigans. Okay, so we, we'll get to wide, which Brett Kingman really likes. Dual modulation, pan, pa and pattern. So, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs>
It sounds absolutely wonderful. Lost for days. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really great. So I'm I'm with you in that there are there's some sounds in that. To hear that in an analog context is amazing. It's not going to replace. Um, there are digital things that you can do with delays that are uh, that it won't replace, but. 99% of the time when you're using delay it's a it's a slap back it's a it's a long you know sort of echo in the background and it will do all that stuff yeah um so really i mean i'm looking at the sir there thinking we've put that on there it being sort of king of modern analog delays it is mono isn't it it is mono i yeah. just realized so it's kind of a slightly un unfair comparison yeah Maybe we should just hear a couple of the mono modes and just hear the basic tonality of yeah, the thing, yeah, but back to back. Yeah. And then we'll finish off talking about the timeline and why maybe, as great as it is, you either would or wouldn't choose the 101 over something like a fully functioned modern digital device. Yeah. But you know, there is only one answer for that, though. Is that you just have to have them both. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Um, Let's have a, just have a quick basic listen to the discovery then for those of you that have bought the discovery. It's, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, let me see if I can remember how to use it. Um, we'll go back to, I think it'd be probably fair to go into the modern mode on the sure. on the boss because it offers slightly longer times. If, if we feel we need to move from there, we will. Let's have a quick listen to the discovery, Dan, and see uh, what we can <laughs> discover. One thing that is immediately brilliant about the discovery mm -hmm. is the fact you can affect the filter on the repeats. Now, yeah. there's plenty of delays on which you can do this. Analog delays, maybe not quite so much. Mm. On a lot of digital delays, there's no obvious way to do that on the DM101. No. It's just within the sound of the parameters. Exactly. Uh, I don't think there's any hidden features. We've had a look at the cheat sheet. Um, so just have a listen. What I'll do is um, I'll get down to play something, and I'll filter the top end off and then the bottom end off, and you'll see the effect that that makes. What you will have noticed in the carbon copy is that there is a gentle filtering off of top and bottom end mm -hmm. in the way that it goes off in the repeats. So just listen to that a sec. Hold on a second. Uh... Yeah, it gets thinner down that curve, and by manipulating these controls here on the on the um, on this, we can get it to do something similar. Uh, do 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 yeah. So what we've got there on the discovery is I've I've uh, low cut a little bit so that as it goes off, the the, the repeats lose the weight of the bottom end, which mm -hmm. is another great way to help them sit underneath what you're playing. Let's see how close we can get to that with the DM101. So let's hear the discovery again.
Yeah, that I, there's a the 101 has a clarity to it, which is great. But being able to filter off that bottom end in the discovery yeah. is really magic. I'm sorry to say I significantly prefer the sound of the discovery in that that mode. That sure. particular example. Now that's not to say the 101 can't be manipulated in some of the other modes and has lots of other features, but just the straight out of the gate yeah. integrity of that it's sonically beautiful. and being able to tweak that uh, the way that it goes off. For me, that's kind of everything because if you're using a slightly more bassy sound or I don't know, wherever you happen to be that night, there's a, a lot of bottom end or there's a lot of top end, you can instantly tweak the delay to sit under. Because that is the pro I don't want to speak for everyone, but that's the problem I have with delay. Yes. The minute it's more prominent is the minute that it starts to kill everything I'm trying to play. Yeah. And it's top end in delay repeats is discussed a lot. Yeah. But bottom end is something that is so important, is rarely talked about. And having the filter on the bottom end of the repeats is is so huge. Yeah. And of course, so Dan, the delay that Dan and I use most of the time is the free the tone. Um, flight time future, future factory. factory which you can you can filter on the repeats of there and it does a pretty good uh, uh, approximation of an analog delay but it doesn't sound like an analog no. delay in the way that a B BBD type analog sure. delay does sure um, I'm just seeing if any of these other modes would have been more relevant for that no I don't think so interestingly the classic uh, one thing we haven't listened to is just straight up mode I'm interested to see how much delay time there is in the straight up mode. Okay. I really, really, really want to be able to filter that bottom end. Yeah. Um, to make that clear, the classic mode has up to twelve hundred milliseconds. So they're obviously using a, a more all the all the chips, more chips yeah. there to get the delay. What's the noise like? Just out of interest, on those longer delay times. Let's have a hear. It's pretty impressive. So in order to get long delay times out of analog chips, what's the problem? Uh, so it's this basically the sampling rate. Uh, as the as you increase the clock time, the it's a what happens is it's a basically an electrical charge that's it's the when they call a bucket brigade thing. It's it passes this electrical charge down the chips, which is what gives you the delay, and the uh, as you increase the delay time, you have sort of less integrity by the end. Like you've you've slopped out all this all, all the excess water. Um, so, with analog delays, the shorter the delay time, the more clarity and fidelity that you have in in the yeah. delay. The longer the delay times, because um, you can take a normal analog delay chip and give it a really long delay time, but it'll just there's nothing left. And it becomes so really noisy, doesn't it? Yeah. This sort of signal yeah. to noise ratio gets really out of hand, which they seem to have managed brilliantly well. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a certain advantage when the delay repeats are dark. A lot of the noise you end up hearing is high end, so it's it's gone by then. Sure. <laughs> yeah, again, it's great. I mean, it, it, straight out of the gate, in order to be ha in order to have an analog delay that will do twelve hundred milliseconds, it's amazing. In addition to all that other stuff, bearing yeah. in mind we were saying earlier, the carbon copy goes up to six hundred, I think, somewhere yeah. around there. So if you do need those longer delay times, it's a great way to it's a great way to do it. Because the other thing, practically speaking, about the one hundred and one, you're going to have to have a big reason to replace your single delay pedal 
with that on your pedal board because it takes up two pedals worth of space at sure. least. Yeah. So you're going to need to need more than one delay pedal can do. Yeah. The the big thing with that for me is that you've got it's programmable, right? Presets. Presets. How it, many presets? Uh, well, it has four on the top. It's got if you use MIDI, you've, it's 128 that you can you know access via its MIDI stuff. So, in that sense, if the sound is something that you can utilize, especially for stereo players, then you can program your sounds up, store them, and record them via MIDI. Yeah. Which is massive. Yeah, yeah. You know, expression pedal capability, so you can control all the knobs apart from the um, the delay mode, like the engine select. You can control all the knobs via an expression pedal. Yeah. So, in that sense, it's it's sort of similar uh, to the timeline where you can store your sounds as presets. You know, control them all via an expression pedal. In actual fact, the only delay that we have here that won't do that is the carbon copy. Yeah. Right? Because these are all programmable. Yeah. One of the reasons we love the Sirius so much. Also, can't forget um, our uh, dear friend Joel Corti um, at Chase Plus Audio. You know, when they brought out their uh, the first delay, the... Tonal recall. The tonal recall. It? Yeah, and then there's a and red that, knob version. There's a red knob version, a blue knob version, and, and they had all that capability also as well. Yeah, I mean, on the subject of pro, uh, presets, don't know how, how many you need. For me, four is enough. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the other reasons I would say if I was going to buy one delay pedal tomorrow, it would be the DD200. Sure. Because those, if you can see here, if you come out of... Um, tap tempo mode by simply pressing and holding this switch. You can go from manual mode, which is where we are now, to preset mode and, and stomp through your four presets. Yeah. Uh, which for me is enough because it, it's no coincidence that those things we showed you earlier happen to be the four things that I would tend to use. Slapback, sure. doubling, uh, a three, medium three, length delay that will work for anything, and yeah. then just a straight delay that I can tap at whatever Tempo, tempo yeah, I yeah. need it for for the tune. Sure, and that that tends to cover anything I would need for delay. So we can do that as well on the on the boss here. Here we go, manual mode, preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four, and you'll have seen this in all the other demos. It is simply a matter of getting a sound, Dan. How good does that sound? What is that? Uh, preset one. I have no idea what it is. No, it's not. I, uh, I've, I've, I've gone to preset one, but I've amended the knobs. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to save the preset. Oh, very, please save that. It's, That's awesome. It's, um, it's the dual modulation. So we've got a dual stereo delay with different modulation. Well, with independent <sighs> modulation on both sides. So I think we press and hold. Yep. We then select the one that we want to select it in, which is one. And then we press and hold again. So now when we cycle through our presets, just let's see if it's there. That's killer. That's really awesome. That is really, really killer. Okay, so uh, presets, as you can see, four available from the top panel using this, the middle switch there, plus your manual mode. So you could set the knobs, there's actually five, you could set your knobs where you want them for manual yeah. and then have four additional sounds. Yeah. Okay, final question then. Um, the killer question really, could an analog delay ever replace something like a timeline? Yeah. That's a... And that's a big one for me because the short answer for anyone of you who uses 
presumably it's got all kinds of sparkly, shimmery stuff and all that. So if you use that stuff, no, of course it can't because yeah. it won't do that. Yeah. But take the crazy, what's it even called, that stuff? Uh, well, you've got shimmer delays. You've got Shimmer, that's the word I was looking yeah, for. Yeah. You've got, um, so, okay. This is a... Um, So this is called ice. It's like a pitch shifty reverse thing. It's just an example of something that you can do in the digital realm. Um. And then you've got I mean, it's, it's you know. And then you'd be able to um, change the pitch of that using an expression oh, parallel. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. It swells. Sorry, it's been two seconds. It's been a bit weird. When Dan was going to put the timeline on today, I said, do we have to use it? Because every time I use it, I can't make it work. So pitch shifty, you know. Yeah, so it, it, clearly an analog delay is not going to give you any of that unless you use a bunch of a, extra processing in order to create that but out of the pedal itself, no. So yeah. for that then, for your crazy sounds, super modulated If that's the stuff you're shifty, into, absolutely. If that's the stuff you're into, you, as beautiful as the, some of the ambient stereo sounds are on the 101, it's not going to give you... The you know the the pitch shifting stuff, um, you know, built in looper. Mm. It, so I guess it depends on what you're using the timeline for. The reality is, ninety nine percent of the stuff that I use the timeline for is echoes. That's the question, isn't it? Okay, yeah. so you got a gig tomorrow night. Yep. What are, what are delay sounds do you need? And this what what are we talking about? Like a standard bar room cover type gig. Yeah. What delay sounds do you need? I I need. A th like a doubling, thickening delay for rhythms. Right, let's right. set that up then. So we'll go on the vintage uh, delay. Yep. We'll put the delay time down to, you tell me where you like it and then we'll save it. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we're going to save that to one. Oh, no, save it to two. Too late. <laughs> okay, we'll save it to two. Yeah, yeah. So your doubling delays in number two. Yep, yep. What do you need next? Um, I need a, I need a, 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 a sort of long echoey memory man type delay. So modulated. Uh, Single head. Yeah. Modulated how many milliseconds? 300, 300 and between so, 300 and 400. So we could do that either in the DM2, which will be darker, or we could do it in the modern, which will give you a bit more fidelity in, in the, the modern. Let's do right. the modern. modern it is then. Uh, vintage. Oh, that is modern. Yes. Okay. Uh, so would you say about 300 ish? Yeah. Go on then. Let's just check that it is 300 a minute. Uh, let's 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 just see. Nice. Yeah. About three hundred. Yeah. Yep. How much? How much intensity and how much delay volume? Uh, delay volume down a bit. That's it, and a bit of uh, modulation. Lovely. Yeah. Just give me a bit of 
Well, just give me a bit of um, grunge for that, just so I can. Lovely. Yep. Perfect. So we'll save that to, to three. Three, yep. And then what else do you need? Uh, just a uh, a one for one repeat uh, uh, that you can tap. That I can tap. Okay. So if we go to uh, try the multi head for this one. You don't want a stereo one for your last yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Go on. Oh, you've, we've got that one, haven't we? We've got that we've one. We've got the one. mega stereo okay, one. Okay, so yeah, we'll yeah. go multi head. Yep. So is you, are you, got two, are you sure you only want one, one head? Uh, give me. Yeah, yeah, no, you do do one and two, one and four. That's nice. And just tap, just tap that for me. Hang on, so is the tap setting head one? Yeah, it must be, yeah. Yeah, okay, forget that. Let's go into a single head. All right. Uh, so we'll go to um, the modern again, and you just want one. Actually, well, let's have your doubling and your delay. That worked, didn't it? Yes. That is so good. And then the second delay will be all here. Yeah. Enough, enough intensity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, really great. Uh, in which case, we'll save that to four then. Perfect. So now you've got your four delays. Yep. You've got your. Uh, let's let's just play them through. See, to me, that's just you. Yeah. That whole slightly modulated analog delay thing. Yeah. I could I could make that work. All the stuff in the timeline, unless you were doing a specific set that required those otherworldly sounds. Yeah. I think you'd be I think that would do you. It would absolutely do me. <laughs> it would absolutely do me. I the stereo stuff has blown my mind. Yeah. Um I it's it's done so well. I'm with you as to be if I could have the control on the bottom end roll off, yeah, that would yeah. be really cool. The tone knob would have been killer. Also, I don't know if you noticed, there is a, a bit of a lag between um, preset yeah. recall. Yeah. That is a couple of seconds. And you've got to get, uh, it's got to sort of re. Purpose the chips and stuff, and yeah. So in a in a modern digital delay, you'd get spillover between your presets. Yeah. Uh, not possible in the analog, or at least not possible in the analog realm without a load of other rubbish that would make it much worse. Sure. Fair. 
fair. Yeah, so when you do change presets, you don't get the spillover. You can get spillover between on and off. Yeah. So you can set it to, if you t hit the delay off, your trails will continue, or you can have just a hard off, as it were. Sure. But not between presets. And that might that might be a deal breaker for some of you. Sure. So I would, of all these delays, I'd absolutely have the 101. Yeah. Because I, I could literally do 90 five percent plus of everything i need with that i will probably have another dig digital delay on the board as well just because there's sounds with digital delays that you just can't get with anything else yeah like you know i love 12-bit you know like dd3s and stuff that that sound yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is really cool but i think they have done an exceptional yeah job that with is that. properly bonkers good i yeah. mean I hope it comes through on the video, but once Dan starts to dial in a sound he likes, he then stops playing the guitar and something approaching music starts to happen. And if, if I could sum up what analog delays do, it is that. Yeah. It 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 gives you this kind of bed to play on or this thing to lean back on or something when you get it dialed just right because it's not obtrusive, it doesn't get in the way of what you're playing. Yeah. And everything that it's creating sonically, harmonically, and underneath is complementary, mm. not not fighting. Yeah. And for me, that that is why analog delays remain so so lovable. Yeah. Personally, I'd take the Sur still. Sorry, um, I don't need stereo. Sure. I only ever run delays wet dry. Yeah. Uh, and the ability to knock those the bottom end repeats back. off the bottom end yeah. uh, is actually more important than all the other bells and whistles sure to me but stereo everything else that it has in it clearly uh the basic feature set is considerably more yeah yeah but no, yeah I'm, I'm i'm think they've done a really wonderful job i'm so impressed that they would do it yeah at because this point at, yeah it's a, i mean it's a hard thing to do yeah you know to like to say okay we're we're going to do a you know multi-engine programmable delay pedal and it's going to be analog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big deal. It's so great. hats off to to Boss for doing that. Not aware of anything else like it, are you? No, not with the stereo capability that that's got. Don't think anything else exists uh, in that realm at this point. Um, in the purely analog realm, let's just say it once again. You know, if you're looking at it, go well. Hang on a minute, my TC Electronic Flashback does all that. It's digital. Yeah, this is. Genuinely analog. Amazing. So happy days. Happy days indeed. Yeah. I, I, how much is it then? It is, it's 400 plus pounds. On, uh, it's in the ballpark of the timeline, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 449, but please check that. Timeline is about the same, maybe 429. Sir Discovery, depending on where you buy it, is can start with a seven. <laughs> Okay. And the um, DD200 is still, you can still pick them up around 200. Wow. 200 to 229. So okay. it, value for money every single day of the week, DD200. And I will reiterate what I said at the top of the show. That's the delay pedal I would buy if I could only have one. Right. And I was on a sensible budget. Yeah. Because it does most of everything. Sure. For a really decent price. Yeah. And it sounds good. Yeah. Um, oh, look, Mick picks the most expensive one again. You pick the DD two hundred. No, no, no. I, I would have the Sir if I. Oh, sorry, of course. Today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, sonically, I would have the Sir. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. But yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, 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 the DM one, maybe going straight to the pool room. Straight to the pool room. Yeah. <laughs> you better forget a bigger pool, Dan. I think. Definitely. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Massive thank you to our dear friends at Anderton's Music uh, in Guildford and Surrey and our mates in Australia at Pedal Empire. Um, also, massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com. Yes, buy merch. Please buy merch. It's the predominant way we fund this show. One other way is thatpedalshop.com in the US where you can pick up, I don't know, most of this stuff probably. Some of it anyway. Um, US and Canada, check that out. All the links and everything will be in the description below okay it was a bit of a bitty show today yeah not much extended playing sorry about that but that is kind of the nature of comparing things listening to repeats of delays is a bit like nails down a blackboard but hey 
Someone's got to do it, Dan. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> uh, before we go, massive thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. Um, and join us on Mondays for viewers, comments, and questions. Our patrons also get the podcast of our VCQ. And we have monthly giveaways for our patrons as well. We do. So, yeah. Uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.